Welcome to module 25 of object oriented analysis and design. We have been discussing about use case diagrams and uh, we have seen all the major components that constitute a use case diagram. So, in this module we will focus on trying to analyze the leaf management system specification further and try to show you how these use cases can be identified and put in together and we will try to conclude with a first level very tentative use case diagram of the LMS system. But before I get into that, let me just uh, also recapitulate some of the major features of the use case diagrams that we have already discussed. This will be the outline for this module. So, certainly as you can uh, see the main uh, actions would be in terms of identification of actors, use cases and the relationships. So, first on to the recapitulation. So, this is uh, uh, just based on what we did in the earlier module. So, this is an use case example not one which we have discussed earlier. So, this is kind of uh, checking in at a airlines counter and uh, the, the possibilities are that uh, you could do a group check in that is if you are going on a tour together or you can do an individual check in naturally it involves checking in of the baggage and before you can get into the flight you need to have a security screening. So, these are the different use cases that uh, exist. So, for each one of them we, we specify that this is the use case name, this part is where you can put more additional notes and so on. We identify two actors, this is a passenger who is a business actor we say and this is another which is who is a tour guide. So, he comes in place when uh, certainly some a group of people need to check in for a particular tour. So, the kind of things that we can uh, expect is one is uh, an include relationship between the group check in and the individual check in, which means that if five people have to check in, then necessarily it means that each one of them have to check in individually. So, this is an include relationship which say that to be able to complete the group checking, it is necessary to complete the individual check ins. Similarly, we can see that between the individual check in and the baggage checking, there is an extend relationship. Why is it an extend relationship? Because if someone is checking into uh, checking in for a flight, then whether or not the person will carry some baggage to be checked in is optional. It is not every passenger, some passenger could just fly with one bag and does not need to do a check in. So, this optionality is uh, demonstrated by the extend relationship. So, individual check in at an extension point which is not shown here, uh, possibly saying that uh, has baggage kind of will invoke the baggage check in uh, use case. <coughs> then there is another here. Now, some more that we can observe here is between the actor tour guide and the passenger, there is a specialization relationship because <coughs> any tour guide can also be a passenger, might travel with the same group, but a passenger is not a tour guide necessarily. So, a tour guide can do all that the passenger can do like it, the tour guide can individually check in, will go through the security screening, but this is not possible that is a passenger cannot do a group check in. So, that is exemplified by this uh, uh, generalization specialization relationship between the actors what we are showing here. Further you can observe that uh, certainly actors are associated with uh, uh, use cases. So, the tour guide is associated with the group check in which is marked by this association link. The passenger is uh, associated with the individual checking which is marked by this association link and we can also see that there could be multiplicities at the end both ends of the association. The multiplicity means that uh, how many different actors can associate with how many different use cases. So, here we say it is one 
dot dot star which means that 1 to any number any number more than 1 and here it is 1. So, it says that any number of passengers at least one passenger has to be there, but any number of passengers can go through security screening. Similarly, in this case of association between passenger actor and the individual check in use case the one dot dot star again means that any number of passengers can check in individually here the one is not mentioned if it is not mentioned then it is meant to be one always. So, this is called the multiplicity what else do we observe? We observe that uh, there is a bounding box that puts all these use cases together this bounding box is the perceived uh, boundary of the world that we are trying to model and uh, it is often called the business boundary and uh, or the subject of the use case diagram which bounds the whole system and typically the subject will have a name to identify this particular business boundary and we will find that always the actors will be outside this business boundary because they are not inside the system dynamics they come and interact with the system to get the kind of uh, services that they would want. This is just uh, uh, looking at uh, another example this is just an example of a uh, typical internet based uh, purchase process. So, what uh, we you will have we have one actor who is a customer this one actor in case you are doing a counter purchase kind of. So, there is another actor who is the clerk there is an actor who is administrator and there is some actor like payment service and from the model itself you can figure out that while customer clerk and administrator are human actors this is a payment service is a non human actor which is who is involved in the system. The use cases uh, the typical use case is a checkout which is after you have identified uh, the items and put them in your cart whether it is a virtual cart or it is a cart. Uh, at the shop you go to the payment counter and you try to uh, place the order saying that uh, I want to buy these things and I am placing the order and I will make the required payment. Naturally, if you do the checkout the other actor associated with the checkout may be the clerk this may be non existent if you are just doing a internet kind of transaction in which case the clerk may again become a non human. Uh, actor, but uh, at the counter the clerk is a human actor. So, the clerk has to take part in the checkout because uh, she accepts the goods that you want to buy and prepares the order for you. Certainly, the checkout will include payment because you are not allowed to uh, go away with the goods until you have made the payment. So, to complete the functionality of the checkout use case you need to perform the functionality of the payment use case. Now, payment uh, assuming that you are making the payment through uh, your credit card or debit card you will need the payment gateway the bank and the payment gateway like the visa master uh, this kind of master card this kind of to take part and make that payment happen. So, you can see an association between the payment service and the payment use case through this association. In addition there could be uh, certain uh, use case to manage the users to manage the total floor and administrator is the use case uh, is the actor who will be associated with managing these administrator will not directly take part in the other activities. So, uh, if we look at the associations customer is associated with checkout and uh, the multiplicity is well understood that any number of customers uh, could do the checkout. Then <coughs> payment service one payment service is associated with multiple payments and here you can note that the multiplicity includes 0 which means that uh, a payment uh, use case may not actually use a payment service for example, if you are paying through cash then it is just a cash counter. So, that is a kind of meaning that the multiplicity can give you and uh, there is a extend relationship on this side where 
the while doing the checkout you might uh, uh, need some help for example uh, some item <coughs> may not have a proper barcode and uh, some uh, executive need to be called for the item code and so on so you might need different kinds of uh, help but you do not need them as a regular process you need them optionally under certain conditions and therefore help is an extended use case for checkout the whole system falls within this uh, system boundary this rectangle and is given a uh, subject name of checkout. So, this is just another example of a different system showing how use cases can be done. So, <coughs> I just uh, wanted to uh, consolidate all that uh, we have learnt in terms of the use case diagram in terms of two scenarios airlines check in and in terms of a uh, purchase checkout to show you how typically you should be building the use case diagram for the system that you would uh, want to represent. Now, let us quickly uh, uh, look over the actions that you will need for the LMS. Certainly, to build the use case uh, diagram, you need to identify the actors. We have uh, already started this activity with the uh, linguistic analysis of nouns the same thing will be required here. So, all that we have analyzed we can look over them and try to identify different uh, actors like uh, manager, like uh, lead, like uh, executive or even like employee and so on. Uh, but you will have to keep in mind that uh, not all uh, nouns that you identify could be actors. For example, leave this cannot be an actor, because the leave is acted upon you deal with the leave. So, it becomes a subject of what you do, but leave is not something that initiates an action which uh, provides you a functionality. So, it is not only that uh, uh, you, you look for the nouns for example, the another could be sysadmin who could be an actor but not only you look for those nouns, but also on that from that analysis you will have to do a further processing to reason as to who of these could actually act on certain use cases. Naturally, what we will see subsequently is the identification of actor and the identification of use case will have to be closely related. So, if you we, uh, do this uh, then these are the different uh, uh, nouns as we can uh, can identify from this. Now, based on these we can have different classification of actors here. Uh, the human actors are executive lead and manager, the non human actor could be printer, uh, sysadmin could uh, belong here or could also belong here. It depends on uh, what kind of sysadmin you have which is whether it is just a batch administrator process or it is a human being. And uh, certainly, sys admin kind of uh, actors are secondary, because uh, they do not provide the primary functionality of leave management in the system. Whereas, uh, these human actors the executive lead manager are also in terms of our classification are also primary actors. So, we could go uh, through this analysis and then based again based on the specification and our understanding we could. Uh, classify all these different designated actors in the system. And accordingly, we could uh, choose icons for the human and non-human actors. Second is identifying uh, use cases. So, we will try to identify the use cases for LMS and use case is basically as I said is an action. So, we will uh, start by trying to identify if it is an action then in the specification it must associate with some kind of a verb. So, we will try to start with the list of verbs that we had uh, extracted from the specification and I am just referring to the list that has just the stem not all different qualified and derived forms of the verbs. So, on this we can see that these are different verbs which approve regret, request, revoke become use cases. In fact, you will see that almost all of these verbs in some way or other 
represent use cases. Now, certainly it is a matter of judgment of the designer of the modeler as to what you want to explicitly say is a use case and what you just want to ignore. Uh, as an example, I would just uh, draw your attention to the verb work. So, at the beginning of the specification, uh, we have a very small reference that uh, employees work in the organization and of course, which we understand also right? why are employees there in an organization unless they work. But the question is in terms of modeling the LMS system, do we expect to see a use case called work? I would say possibly not, even though uh, work may be the most important uh, use case for the organization to survive or that is where most of the uh, actors particularly the human actors would be involved most of the time, but from the perspective of the leaf management system working is not the uh, matter of importance. Working or idling or you know how some employee, uh, how productive an employee is are factors which may be important for the organization, but in terms of the lift system the uh, var work may not associate with the use case. So, that is a there is a whole lot of uh, judgment and you know re-understanding uh, revision of the specification that is involved in actually carrying this out uh, carefully. So, uh, if you read through then even uh, after that elimination you will come up with possibly these uh, set of uh, verbs which could which should be considered as a functionality of LMS system for use cases like uh, the daily ascendance process, the requesting leave, approving leave, cancelling leave, revoking leave, availing leave and checking the medical report, checking other reports and the various other supporting use cases. This may not again we can think of that some are important use cases like uh, request uh, approve and so on and some are supporting ones like uh, debit credit which also must happen. but it is not the primarily visible use cases of the system. So, we will come up with uh, this kind of a list of uh, verbs which could be termed into use cases. Next uh, we need to identify relationships. Uh, the process of identification of actors and uh, use cases by analysis of noun and verb and uh, the understanding of the specification will by itself give rise to a good insight into how the relationship should be looked at. So, relations relationships are primarily of three kinds include extent and generalization. So, for include we will need to look at that for each and every use case that we intend to put whether that use case is completely self contained. If it is not we need to conceive whether there could be other use cases which is required to complete the functionality of this use case. And this analysis of uh, whether the functionality needs to be completed with another use case give rise will give rise to the include relationship. And uh, mind you while you do this exercise it is also possible that uh, for example, if we just uh, uh, just let me uh, uh, for, for once uh, go back to the verb use cases. So, these are the use cases that we have seen. Now, in this we do not have say a use case called say validate leave, right. We do not have this. We have all these different use cases and if you actually read uh, the specification why we did not have this, because in the specification this has not been explicitly stated. And so, when we looked for the verbs we did not see a verb like uh, validate or check occurring and therefore, it we missed that out. But once we try to uh, look at the functionality and we try to look at uh, the functionality of request uh, approve then we find that uh, how can I request for a leave unless that request is a valid one. For example, it uh, if I am depending on the type of leave I am applying for example, if I am applying for casual leave 
and if it spans over four consecutive days, then we know from the specification that it is something that cannot be approved. If I am applying uh, for a medical leave, sick leave and I am not supported by uh, uh, valid reports, then it will not be sustained. So, there are different kinds of conditions and uh, uh, sub tasks that will need to be done. So, for if you request for a leave or you approve want to approve a leave, then you will need to check if that leave under consideration is valid or not. So, this is a use case which we discover in the process of analysis and it is not explicitly stated in those terms in the specification. And we try to put those as include here. So, uh, I would just like to remind you that the include relationship necessarily is the best handle to provide reuse. That is, if you do not, uh, if you identify less number of uh, include relationships, because you may not find them explicitly in the specification document, the consequence could be that request leave has to put all that code, all that actions required for validating a leave and the approved leave will have to duplicate all of those again as its own functionality, whereas actually they are the same functionality of validating the leaves of different types. So, the reuse will get enhanced if we can identify such use cases which can be included in one or more multiple cases and can improve the reuse and bring a better functionality, better modularity to the system. Second is uh, the situation of extent, which is uh, deciding that in terms of a use case, whether we have conditional behavior. So, what uh, we are trying to do, we are trying to say in this case, trying to look at a proof. So, I want to make a proof a use case, which is a very valid justified one. That is a basic functionality. So, that will be a use case. Now, I think that if somebody has to approve, I go back to the document, if somebody has to approve, can the approval be done blindly. Now, mind you, this approved leave has already included a validate leave. So, the system has already validated that the leave according to the basic structure of uh, leave duration, leave type, availability of leave to that particular employee and so on has already been checked. So, is it that for all leave, if it is a valid one, then the lead can simply blindly go and approve it provided the lead is ok with the absence of the employee during that period or there needs to be further use cases to be used. And we find that some of the leave have other conditions attached and that is the situation of medical leave, maternity, the sick leave as we mentioned there, the maternity leave, parental leave and so on. So, if I want to talk about approved leave, it will have to for the case of medical leave or sick leave, for the case of parental leave, it will have to involve further conditional processing, which is not applicable to approved leave of other kinds. And that is the kind of situation, which uh, gives rise to conditional or optional use cases and that is exactly the extent behavior. So, in terms of identifying the extent behavior, you are specifically looking at what are the uh, what are the situations where a general processing or a general use case action may require very specific uh, sub use cases to be identified and used as extension on a conditional basis. And that is uh, the example we had discussed this particular example earlier also but that is the process that you do, the identification of conditions is the process that you do to extract the extend relationship in the model. Generalization is uh, certainly everywhere, generalization of use cases will look for that once you have identified, first uh, should be that you try to identify as many use cases as you can and then you try to see that between different use cases, if there is total uh, subsumption or a total commonality of uh, behavior as you may have in terms of uh, exporting the 
leave for an executive and the exporting the leave for a manager. You see that this behavior of this use case is totally subsumed in the behavior of the export manager leave or in other words export manager leave needs to possibly do few things extra, but otherwise it is like the export executive leave and like in the way we try to establish the generalization specialization between classes in a very similar way we try to establish the generalization specialization between use cases and we can build those up in terms of the system. Generalization uh, among actors are very similar the you, you will need to identify what actions the or what use cases the actors are associated with and if we find that uh, the use cases or actions for an actor say executive is completely covered by the use cases that the lead employee the lead actor has to perform then you can say that lead is a is an executive or lead is a specialization of the executive mind you whenever we put this uh, generalization uh, specialization relationship that anything that this actor will be associated with in the use case this actor would be able to perform that so you must uh, if there are exceptions then it will this uh, generalization will not work so you'll have to be careful about doing this so uh, using uh, all these combining all these uh, techniques of identifying uh, actors uh, use cases and relationship uh, we finally consolidate uh, for the leaf management system so here uh, i'm trying to show the um, uh, use case diagram with uh, the actors the executive lead and uh, manager and we can see that there is a generalization relationship amongst them and there are other non human actors as well and with that uh, now all uh, the major use cases have been put in place for example an executive will go for daily attendance can request for a leave if the leave is requested then that request uh, use case will include the validate leave uh, so that the leave can be validated uh, the executive can cancel or avail leave and so on and certainly the export the list of leave. Now, what happens is uh, as we have seen that lead is a specialization of executive which mean that the lead will also be able to uh, provide daily attendance will also be able to provide request leave will also be able to cancel leave and so on, but we do not actually need to depict them on the diagram because since a lead uh, is a is an executive the lead will through the executive the lead will be associated with all the use cases to which the executive is associated. So, what we do we just uh, here try to associate the use cases that the lead can perform, but like revoke leave or approve leave certainly the executive in turn cannot uh, be associated with these use cases. So, we have uh, the approved leave and as, as we had earlier discussed the approved leave had a uh, couple of extension points. So, it extends and it needs to check for medical report in case of SLML it extends and check for uh, parental leave uh, condition and the parental certificate for this. So, all these are being put together and then if we look at the manager we find that the manager also is a lead. So, which means that the manager can actually perform all the function all can be associated with all the use cases like approve leave like revoke leave as what the lead can do. And since lead in turn is associated with request leave with cancel leave and so on the manager also will be able to. So, manager basically kind of gets associated with these use cases to which directly in the diagram the executive is shown associated in two levels. Since lead is an executive lead is gets associated with request leave and since manager is a lead he in turn 
will get associated with the request leave. But specifically manager can also be associated with a number of use cases like uh, adjust, debit, leave, credit leave, hiring, firing of employees and so on, which neither the lead nor the executive will be associated with. So, these are the exclusive uh, associations of use cases with the manager. Naturally, manager has uh, a separate use case to exports managers leave, lead has separate use case for that and both of them are specializations of export executive leave, because executive leave does not need to uh, take care of the reporting employees, whereas the lead and manager cases need to do those. So, this uh, kind of puts uh, the different pieces that we are doing together, but uh, I have mentioned here, please note that uh, all cases in all details are not given in this diagram, because that would have been very cluttered uh, in, in one slide. Uh, later on, uh, we would like to uh, publish uh, the more complete solution of use case and other UML diagrams on the LMS system. So, you will be able to see more detailed uh, design at that point of time. Meanwhile, I will urge that you uh, follow the LMS specification and work out uh, the uh, use case diagram in full depth, so that uh, you can really appreciate how the modeling is happening and when we finally, later on when we publish the solution, you will be able to compare and check whether you have been on track or you have been different. So, to summarize in this module, we have uh, looked, uh, tried to uh, take all the different features of the use case uh, diagrams and uh, suggested outlined a methodology to extract information appropriately from the specification and populate the diagrams for the case of leaf management system, which you should use for your practice. And we have also published uh, the assignment management system, on which assignments have also been given. So, you should, you can also use that and start practicing on the UML diagrams.